Fluid AR movement, Shella J next, and we back grooving precise, exact groupings, pressure made, fine tune in the wrong place. Life don't like. Hey guys, so this video is basically going to be about how I get started with a new rifle, uh, specifically scoped rifles. And uh, this specific video is actually going to be on this bolt action SIG cross. This one's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I do to get started and how I build a little bit of comfort with a, a new system. It's been a while since I've done anything with bolt guns, so we're going to kind of uh, revisit that together. But um, we'll walk you through it at the range and we'll see my process and the things that I do. And uh, if you guys have a different process or, or something um, that uh, uh, you do uh, maybe in a similar way, but for a different reason, uh, I, I would love to hear about it. Post it in the comments and uh, let's talk about it together. So without any more delay, let's just jump right into the range. All right, so the first thing we wanna do when we start off with a new rifle, I like to just shoot it a few times, not really shooting for a group, you know, orient it at the target, get a feel for the trigger, get a feel for the recoil of the rifle, and try to understand what it's going to feel like when I'm actually going for accuracy, going to uh, uh, shoot for a real group and get real data with it. So I've already done that with this rifle. Uh, I didn't film it because it's kind of boring, but uh, I've already done that. The next step is to put our zero on it. And for this rifle, this is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm going to zero it at 100 yards. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we will take a look at the group, see how it's doing, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so right out of the gate, this is basically the cheapest 6.5 Creedmoor ammo that I can find. Uh, it is S&P 140 grain full metal jacket. I don't think it's low quality ammo, but the SIG definitely doesn't seem to like it as much as uh, I actually had hoped. So let's take a look at the target. All right, so here is our 100 yard target. Um, as you can see, it's not it's not liking the ammo as much as I was hoping it would, but for cheap ammo, uh, that's going to be about as good as we're going to get, I think. So we're going to make an adjustment and correct that zero a little bit, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next step is chronograph. I have that sitting right here. I'm going to try to orient the camera so you guys can see the velocity as I shoot. Okay, hopefully you guys could see that. I haven't looked at the footage yet, but uh, I shot three rounds. Sometimes I'll shoot more depending on the ammo. This one, the spread wasn't super wide, so I'm not concerned about, uh, not really concerned about getting wild velocity shifts out of this stuff. But uh, we had, our first shot was at 2580. Our second shot was 2556 and our third was 2573. So not a huge spread in velocity there. Uh, obviously you can get better than that uh, if you wanted to, but it, it's really not too bad. Basically you add those up, divided by the number of shots, which is three in this case. So our average velocity is actually 2569, nice. Uh, we will put that into our ballistic app and there's a lot of ballistic apps out there. I use Strelock Plus. Um, It's, uh, I don't know if you can get it anymore, but uh, it's, it's a paid app. It's not that bad. You, it's a one-time charge. And it's actually been quite accurate. The data that you put into it exactly equals the data you get out of it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called velocity validation. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a group at 100 yards, make sure that everything's where I want it to be, make sure the rifle feels good, make sure the, the group is what I want it to look like. And then I'm gonna shoot at 200 using the recommended elevation adjustment for my ballistic computer. We'll go down, we'll check and see how close it is. We'll correct that elevation uh, adjustment if we need to, and then we'll do it at 300. Now, ideally you would do this at further ranges. Uh, I usually like to go two, three, five, and then if I can get farther than five, six, or seven, it's a, a good way to keep your tables as accurate as possible. This range only goes to 300 yards, so we're just gonna do it at 300 today and get a basic chart ready. And uh, when we get some time, we'll take it out to the long range. Okay, we've got our 100 yard zero. I've got all my information plugged into my ballistic calculator. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to shoot at 200 yards using the recommended elevation adjustment from the computer. So we have 200 yards, we're gonna plug that in here. Now, I am not going to do any left to right correction. The wind has picked up a little bit since I started. So we may see a left to right shift on the target. I'm not gonna plug that into the computer. I'm not really worried about left or right shift right now. I'm more worried about is my elevation shift correct. So let's get started. All right guys, so this is my 200 yard target. And remember the computer said we wanted uh, 0.5 mil elevation. That actually brought us, we were still a couple inches low. I've got a flyer here because I can't seem to not have a flyer. This isn't the best group in the world, but for the cheap ammo that we're using, it's gonna work. Um, my skill level is also coming into play. Like I said, I haven't done bolt action stuff in a while, so bear with me. But, so the 0.5 got us here. I looked through the reticle of the scope and measured how many, um, how many mils of elevation I would actually need and it measured out to be 0.8. So with 0.8, um, center of my group is pretty much here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that a group. Like I said, it's not the best group I've ever shot in my life, but it is, it is uh, a group. So <laughs> we're gonna go with it um, for purposes of this test. So I'm gonna plug into my computer, vertical correction. Okay, so according to the computer, I need 1.4 mils or MRAD of elevation adjustment so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on we already have eight in there so there's one 1.4 lock that down the ammo we're using is cheap stuff so I'm not expecting the world's greatest group here but we're just gonna take a shot and see what happens Okay, so I'm gonna call this a flyer even though it looks really good. I have a little bit of left to right there. That's normal, like I said, the wind picked up a little bit. But I'm still one, two, three, I would call it three and a half inches low. So what that means is I need to make a correction on my computer again to account for the extra elevation that's needed uh, to bring me to the center of the target. Okay, so I changed the trajectory again, uh, like I showed you earlier, and it looks like we actually need 1.7 this time. So we're gonna go back and try that and see how close we actually are. All right guys, so basically what we have here is an overcorrection. And I'm actually glad this happened, because uh, it. It's not super common, but I put a little bit too much uh, into the computer. And so now the center of our group is a little high. We've got a good pairing here. So I'm gonna say that this is probably our group. That's probably my flyer. Again, you're looking at a 10 MOA shooting, uh, shooter shooting five MOA ammo. So we're uh, about as good as we can get right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that correction out of it and we're gonna see where we end up. All right. So I took a little too much out of it. 
but that's about as close as I'm going to get for today. Uh, I'm not going to push it too much. Uh, my eyes are getting a little tired. So um, basically we're about an inch, maybe an inch and a half low. At this distance, you know, you're, it, that could be a number of things. That could be me. That could be a limitation of the ammo. So I'm going to call that pretty good. Our final velocity for this round uh, actually ended up being... 2454 according to the computer so we're gonna save that in there for now and next time I go to the range next time I get out and shoot I'm gonna shoot a little farther but uh, that should get me on the gongs that should get me on the paper at pretty much any distance I need to get to to uh, validate it even further all right so the last thing we want to do is we want to take all the adjustment out of our scope all of the changes that we've made and we want to shoot back at our zero distance or 100 yards and just make sure that nothing's changed make sure the scope's tracking properly make sure uh, as we shot and the barrel got fouled we don't see a huge elevation shift or a velocity change or something like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the bench i'm going to shoot uh, a few rounds and just make sure that everything's good to go. I'll probably finish off this box of ammo and uh, I'll show you what our results are. All right, so we're back at the 100 yard line. And basically what I did was I threw three shots at that target, made sure I was pretty close. And then I ran the box and those were all pretty much there. This one, I just went for, a, for another shot, had a flyer, it is what it is. Uh, so I'm gonna say that our scope is tracking properly. I'm going to say that it's adjusting the way that it's supposed to, at least from one to 300 yards, which I know isn't really a huge amount of change, but it is some change. So I'm going to call that a day with this. Let's uh, get back to the bench and we'll wrap up. Let's wrap it up. So what we did today was we took a rifle that is new to me, one that I haven't uh, spent a lot of time on the range with. And I walked you through how I build a basic dope chart, but also how I just kind of familiarize myself, myself with the rifle. So we started off by just shooting it to get a feel for the rifle. We put some, uh, put some rounds in the magazine and just set them down range. I was shooting at 50 yards for that, just to get a feel for what the recoil's like, what the trigger's like, that sort of stuff. From there, we put a 100 yard zero on it. That's what I prefer to have on scoped rifles. It's just what I'm used to is a 100 yard zero. Once we got our zero on there, we did some velocity testing to give us a baseline to start off of for our ballistic computer. We actually found that our ballistic computer was giving it a little bit more velocity than what uh, the shooting data actually shows. And then we shot from the computer, we shot at 200 and 300 yards to confirm the trajectory. We made some corrections. And then to wrap it all up, we went back to the 100 yard line. We took all of the adjustment that we put into the scope. We took it all back out. We zeroed the scope back out. And we shot at 100 yards to make sure that our zero was holding and our scope was tracking true. And it, it seemed to track just fine. So the ammo we were shooting today was S and B. This is the 140 grain full metal jacket. Not the world's greatest ammo, not the world's worst ammo. The SIG doesn't seem to like it as much as I had hoped it would. I bought a bunch of it uh, just to do some fundamental stuff. It's been a while since I've done any bolt gun stuff, so uh, not as good as it could be, but definitely uh, not too bad for the price of the ammo. Um, the rifle we're shooting is a SIG Cross, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and we have a Voodoo 5-25 to on top. So all in all, a decent package. Overall, I'm, I'm happy with the way that it performed today. I want to say thank you guys for sharing our videos, liking our videos, commenting, subscribing, all of that stuff. Um, that's a huge help. That helps the store a lot, and it's the cheapest way to help the store is to just share our content uh, with your friends and family and tell people about our website. Um, the, the best way to support the store is to go online and make a purchase from our site or to stop into our store and see us in person and uh, talk to us there. I appreciate it. Please subscribe. Please comment on the video. 
I want to see what you guys would do. Maybe there's something you would do differently. Maybe there's a different way to do this. Uh, I haven't unbolt guns in a while, like I, I've mentioned a couple of times now. So if there's a better way to do it, I would like to know. And um, thank you guys for all the interaction, and thank you for uh, being a part of it. We'll see you later. Fluid AR movement, shell a jack nice, and we bad grooving precise. Exact groupings, pressure made, fine tuning, wrong place. Life don't like losing sharks.